<clears throat> Many years ago, actually, it was the first time we came to Panama. I submitted a proposal to change the PDP, and the resulting PDP is the one that we are using now. I've always had my concerns with the appeals procedure, but I didn't propose its modification at the time. At another RIR, there was a proposal for a modification of the appeals process, and that's where I thought to bring it here as well. The current PDP, in the current PDP, the appeals process is quite long. It's left up to the discretion of the board, and the board will ratify or not the proposals. And so I think that it is not transparent and, and neutral enough. Because I mean, among other things, I understand the board has to protect the organization and, and the members. Although point three point three of the PDP says that the board is responsible for appeals, that makes it impossible. I mean, they have to refrain from participating in the policy discussion, and therefore the board cannot participate in the PDP in a freely and neutral manner. That means that many members who are very much involved in the community cannot contribute to the discussions. And since the board, as I said, is responsible for the final ratification of the proposal and their role is to defend LACNIC's membership as the organization, there is an inherent, whether we want it or not, lack of impartiality up to a certain extent. No one can. It's not humanly possible to be 100% objective when you know that there's another process coming after that on the same topic. There are other details that are not specified in the appeals process and that are needed not to <clears throat> cause any non-compliances with the PDP. For example, there is a not a deadline for the submission of an appeal. So someone could just appeal a proposal that was submitted two, three, or ten years ago, which makes no sense at all. So it is critical to separate these roles, ratification and appeals, as it happens in other RIRs. Each one will do it in its own way, but it is important that we are able to separate those roles. Now, what I am proposing, and I will not read the entire text, I don't think it's necessary to go into further detail, is to present a maximum appeals period of four weeks once we have listened to the chair's decisions. And once that deadline is over, the person might have a new four-week period to present a new appeal. So right now, I might not agree with the chairs. I could go back to the list three years from now and say I do not agree with this, even though the proposal might have been implemented. So what I'm trying to say is that we do set a maximum period of four weeks with an extension of four more weeks to submit my appeal if the chairs do not contemplate that, that, that claim, so to speak, to the list. Once the appeal is submitted, what I'm saying is that LACNIC should act as the secretariat and through a call for volunteers or a procedure similar to that, we could a number of community volunteers could be selected. What I'm saying is that they should comply with a number of requirements. One of them is that they, well, first of all, is that it is, we have at least uh, three members, an odd number of members, people that are participating in the PDP, but not particularly in that proposal. So we know that those people have not publicly expressed their opinion on that particular proposal. Then I set a number of deadlines. Why a deadline? So the authors of that proposal that is being discussed or appealed, so they can <clears throat> appeal or they can call on the participants on the appeal committee, and I think this is important, because even though they might not have publicly expressed their opinion on the proposal, it might be clear for the authors that they are against, and therefore the appeal will not take place. 
So instead of, uh, well, to replace the term appeal, I use an article of the Uruguayan law so we don't have to define what that means ourselves. During the appeals process, Corren los plazos. The, once the appeals committee makes a final decision, this is a binding decision, and they have to make this decision based on consensus in a maximum period of four weeks. And basically, this would be the issue. So quite logically, because that is no longer the role of the board, we have to eliminate that from section 3.6, which states that this role is in the hands of the board. So that would be my last slide. Thank you, Jordi. This proposal still does not have an impact analysis. We're going to start the discussion period. We invite you to make your comments on this proposal. We have two microphones in the room. And those who are connected by Zoom, you have the Q&A box. Or you can use the hand icon. Yes, Patara. Yes, I'm Ricardo Patara. I'm against this proposal, first of all. I'm not sure what the issue is that you're trying to solve. Uh, we assume that the current process isn't neutral and it's not impartial. But I don't really see where, where the problem is. When did it occur that something was not neutral or impartial in a decision? So that's the main point. But in addition to that, there are several points that are really uh, I'm concerned about. The text is a bit confusing because it does state that the appeals begins in the list and then the mortgages are four weeks, but like Nick will have the role of secretary and they have two weeks. So is the, are these parallel processes? When does one begin? Where does the other finish? So this is a bit confusing. And I'm also worried about the fact that the person who submits this appeal can request removing one of the members of the appeals committee. And this leads to a problem because the person who makes the appeal can remove people. So I think this uh, is not very meaningful. And what is more of greatest concern is that this is not binding. And the worst case could be, no matter what the board decides, so I'm totally against We have three people can decide. Ricardo, the decision of the board is always after the process of appeals. The board can ratify this or not. It's about not giving the board that role. I think. And I say this because I submitted twice an appeal. And one detail that I didn't mention is that process of appeals doesn't even say that this is a public process. So the first appeal I submitted many years ago, this was made public. But one that I submitted about three or four or five months ago, maybe six months ago, after the last event, then the decision was informed to me much later than the required time. The board took longer to decide this. But if you read the document with the appeal, which was not published, which I understand should have been the case, then we can see that the board is making a decision that has nothing to do with what is the reason of this appeal. So in this case, I would have to explain every detail but they are defending the position of the chairs and of the staff, but not of the community. So that is where I detect clear evidence of lack of neutrality. But the board itself, on several occasions, state that they don't have to participate because of the conflict posed by the fact that they're responsible for appeals if these should arise. So if we release them some responsibility, that is a point. And regarding the deadlines, one is four weeks. That is the same. 
but today this does, is not specified. This is the one contained in the current procedure. If someone disagrees with the decision of the chairs, they are returned to the list, but it doesn't specify for how long. So once you go back to the list and ask the chairs publicly or tell them that I think you made a mistake, please reconsider your position, then the next period is uh, begins. If you read it, it's quite clear, but if that is not clear, we can do a, a diagram of the different states. But I think it, that's a point. Arturo Serrin, I think that the only person who has made appeals so far uh, have, has been you. So maybe we should call it Jordi's policy of appeal when he's not satisfied with what the community decides and that we should do what he thinks. But seriously, I am totally against this policy. And I think this tries to figure out a solution to a problem that does not exist. There is no problem. And like Ricardo was saying, this is most complex. I think that it does contain fundamental order errors. It says that the board of LACNIC is not neutral, but it is totally neutral. What they are seeking is not to favor the members. What they are seeking to do is to find the best that that is for LACNIC. And many things have to be taken into account in order to make good decisions. I think that no committee will have a better disposition or will be in a better position to decide something that is more complex other than the board. I think that the board is the perfect entity to make this decision. They are perfectly f aware and um, what is being discussed. And now they don't participate in the PDP, and this does not mean that they're neutral. They don't participate in the policy development program because they don't want to, don't want to influence the decisions. So that is the main reason why the board very often does not state its opinion in the PDP. If there are complex things, they have to be absolutely neutral. So I think this is not, uh, it's mistaken. It is like an over-engineered process. It is complicated. Now, who will define the Appeals Committee, how are you going to know if they're neutral or not? So that is a whole issue. So if we already have someone who is neutral, why do we have to reinvent the wheel? So I go back to the first point. Let us try and figure out, so we're trying to figure out solutions to problems that are not that relevant. We're, I think you are the only one that thinks these points are relevant. But maybe this is because I'm the only one who thought about this. Well, we should think of why is, are you the only person who thought about this? Or maybe your participation uh, is not uh, so important, you don't like the decision, and you're trying to find someone who really guarantees and says that, well, Jordi, it is important. Well, that's not the point. The point is that if the PTP doesn't state that the moderate, the chairs can Censor something, they don't cannot do so, and that cannot you cannot have a board that says everything is fine, because I'm sure that if I take this to court, it's really impossible. And I've consulted the three different lawyers; it's impossible to affect that with the PDP text. So, if I say this, I have grounds to say so. Now, maybe. I explained the issue of the appeals committee too fast. Maybe I skipped some details, but I think this has been well defined. And the other point that you referred to, I didn't say that they are not neutral because they don't participate. I think that precisely because they are members that are highly involved in the community, we are not counting on their participation. I'm referring to the board. And one of the things that we need is participation. Now, if the board did not have to take care of these appeals, we could count on their appeals. And it's 10 or 12 people who are most important in the community. That is why it is important to listen to their opinions and to have their participation. Franco. Fernando Frediani in the Zoom. Microphone. 
Let's see. Fernando. I am against this proposal. I didn't quite understand the first part of this proposal. If one of the objectives of the author is to allow the board members to participate in the discussions, as they are members of the board, but I think that's wrong, regardless of the fact that the board is responsible for the appeals. So they will. Even though the board generates these discussions, this might have an impact. Therefore, if the board is against members being candidates during the election period, they have to abstain from any comments in order to avoid conflicts of interest. Now, as regards the appeals committee, I think that they have to be freely elected by the board. If uh, we really have to elect them properly, so if we have people who are directly involved in the appealed proposal and with the chairs, I think that the criteria criterion that has to be followed is has to be discretional by the board. Now, specifically for those cases, you know, like today, the same board we have today has the possibility of assessing that appeal. That process goes against procedural situations. The board will not reassess a consensus or whether there is consensus or not. If there is a decision, goes against the PDP. So I think that the board, as an appeals committee, is well balanced to carry out this task. Thank you. Jordi, would you like to add anything? No, Oscar. I'm Oscar Robles from LACNIC. First of all, I'd like to ask the author, Jordi, to take care with the accusations you make when justifying your proposal, because from the reading we make, I think you are judging the impartial nature of the board, and you say that they are not the appropriate body for this purpose, and if there are any issues, please let us know beforehand before you state these comments. Now, the response to appeals was not published, not because we didn't want to make this transparent, because the accusation, the appeal you made was not done publicly in the policy list. This one was submitted directly to the board. If you had included it in the policy list, we would have published the list, the response. If you want us to publish it, we can do so. That is no issue for us. We tried to protect your privacy and confidentiality. But if you had any issue, or if you would have liked to see the answer to your appeal published, you could have sent one email, or just one email. If someone sends us messages, it is you, and you never sent that email. But you come here publicly to blame or to accuse unfairly and inappropriately, and this is just a waste of time for many of us. Oscar. And regarding your specific proposal and regardless of conducting the impact analysis, I'm not going to refer to the contents because even though you might correct many of these details, I think this is part of an illusion that you have often mentioned, and I think it's important to correct this once again. You said that the community is above the organization, but that's not the way things work here. It might work elsewhere, but in other regions and other places. I don't know who you are referring to when you say this works like that. But this is a different organization. That's not the case here. We created LACNIC, and LACNIC developed the policy development process for the resources. This is not a community with processes that can determine or remove the board. This is an organization that has to take care of all its different risks, financial, operational, etc. And the board has entrusted the membership to take on that responsibility. It cannot happen that the community sends an order to the board that this 
to to delegate the responsibility to the appeals committee, but this should be, not be part of the PDP. It could be a decision made by the board, for example, as with other bylaws in other commissions. Now, finally, regarding your consulting with lawyers, you don't need to do so if you just consult with one. And if that is a competent lawyer, you just need one opinion. We also have a lawyer, and we are aware that what we do is appropriate. So that would be all for the time being. Oscar, the first appeal that was presented was also published in the list. You published it. Now, the list doesn't allow you to do to include any attachments, so I cannot include my appeal, but you can. I didn't want to maintain privacy because there's nothing private in this case. That's quite obvious. You could have used plain text. There is no limit in the number of characters. It's not just about sending plain text, but if you include a PDF, then this is removed from the list. I have to disagree with what you say, that the members are above the community. I have to disagree, and that is not the case here, and in no other RIR. Memberships are part of the community. I cannot say that the community has imposed something on its membership. That is why we have the role of ratifying or non-ratifying. Please check the original PDP. Those who were in the definition of the original PDP, this is done by Germán Valdez from Nick Mexico, who participated in this process as part of the pioneers of this exercise. When LACNIC was created, we include that draft policy to be discussed by an open community when LACNIC already existed. Secondly, the first versions of the PDP include the members assembly with roles to cancel policies that are inappropriate. We removed that not because that has changed. Nothing has changed at all. We said that this is not practical, so the board finally can do this, obviously based on the mandate of the assembly. But that has not changed, Jordi. Maybe you weren't there at the time, you might not recall, but Explicitly, the role of the assembly had been spelt out, and this is the way it had been designed. And this doesn't mean that I have to agree with it. And this doesn't mean that the community has to agree with that. Let's go on to the next question. Good afternoon. I'm Adriana Ibarra. I'm one of the five members of the Ethics Committee at LACNIC. I think that it is relevant to highlight and communicate that LACNIC has a code of ethics and a code of conduct to be followed during the in-person and online activities. This is just a reminder. Please review this and let me remind you that we have the Ethics Committee at LACNIC. Thank you. Thank you, Adriana. Any more questions in the Zoom? All right, thank you very much, everyone, for sharing your opinions. I would like to thank the author. A round of applause for Jordi. Let us now measure the temperature in the room when determining consensus. Let me remind you that in the Zoom, you have a tool that says voting, but it's not for voting, but it's just to state whether you agree or disagree or abstain. The staff, please help us with the counting. Those who are in favor of this proposal, please raise your hand and keep it raised for a, a few moments. Gracias. Thank you. Those who are against the proposal, please raise your hand. Please keep it raised a few minutes, a few moments. Manténgalo levantado. Okay, muchas gracias. Pueden bajarla. Ok, 
Aquellas personas que se abstienen, por favor, levanten la mano. Pueden bajarla, muchas gracias. La propuesta LAC 2024-2 version 1 appeals process completes its eight weeks of initial process on June 24, 2024, and as from that moment and until two weeks, we'll be notifying the community whether this proposal reaches consensus or not. We now invite to invite you to continue the discussion in the policy list. Now let us go on with proposal LAC 2023-4.